Hi, I'm Libby Trickett, four-time Olympic gold medalist, and I'm going back to school with Student Edge. Hi, I'm Simon Morato, and today we're going back to school with Libby Trickett. Hi. Hello, Libby. Thanks for Hi. chatting with us. Thank you so much for having me. What were you like as a student? Oh, that's a good question. I actually, I actually found school quite challenging, to be perfectly honest. It was um, not something that really came naturally to me. Um, sport and physical activity always did, uh, but as a student I, I, I was always challenged. I um, always doubted my intelligence and my abilities um, in the academic world and so I did find it uh, stressful, definitely, um, but fortunately for me I, I put some things into to place that made sure that I was able to complete my schooling and obviously um, gain my OP. So what came first then? Was it a case of, uh, I, I just wish I was in the pool, I wish I was doing sports, or <laughs> did you kind of find that after a while when you were wondering, okay, what am I good at? Oh, it, it's swimming. Um, yeah, it was a really natural evolution for me. I think um, I, I just always loved being in the water. I always loved being active, to be honest. Um, so I did every sport that I possibly could at school and, and through primary school as well. Um, but yeah, it just sort of grew and I, I loved racing and then all of a sudden I worked out that if I trained really hard then I can race really fast. Um, so it really just progressed and in my final year at school I, got, I qualified for my first youth team. So that's sort of where I really thought to myself, hey, it's a possibility that I could make an Australian team. And what did your parents have to say about that? Were they on board <laughs> or they're like, yeah, you're great at swimming, let's, let's follow this path or were they saying, make sure you maybe have a backup plan? So my parents divorced when I was 10, so um, growing up in a single parent household, um, she just wanted to make sure that we were happy in what we were doing. And so for me, swimming made me really happy. Uh, so obviously that was really important for her, but she also comes from a background where education is so important. So I really wanted to make sure I obviously completed grade 12, got a decent, not a great, but a decent OP score, um, to open up possibilities of going on to further study. So my mum always encouraged me and my coach always encouraged me to have something outside of my sport because obviously with sport it's so possible to get injured and then all of a sudden your career is over. Um, and then where do you go from there? So uh, it, yeah, it was always a work in progress. I started studying at uni and then I have been studying um, personal training as well. So. It's been a, an evolution and understanding what I love outside of the sport. Um, but yeah, it was really important for me to have something outside. So you were in the World Championships and you were kind of competing at that elite level by the time you were 18, right? Yeah. So, and I'm assuming that when you're at that level, you're devoting a lot of your life to it. Yeah. Can you still be like a teenager when you are doing these things <laughs> or is it just devotion to the sport and nothing else? Oh, um, it really was... Uh, kind of an all or nothing situation. So when you're 18 and um, you all of a sudden have these goals of making an Olympic team or an Australian team and potentially being the best in the world, it does take a, a certain amount of sacrifice, I guess. But to be honest, at that point, it never really felt like a sacrifice. It was just the decision that I made, the choice that I made to go to training rather than maybe go out to a party with my friends or um, those sorts of things. It, it, can be challenging at times to make those decisions at that age, but um, I knew what I wanted to do and I knew what I was aiming to achieve and, and that seemed just like a natural extension of, those decisions seemed like a natural extension of, of, of those goals. So um, it, yeah, it, it, could, it was challenging, I'm not gonna lie, but uh, it, ultimately for me, it was really all worth it in the end. Well, totally, I mean, you, you have you know, so many, you know, uh, these gold medals and these great achievements, you also have some bronze medals, and yes. I, I wanted to ask, you know, that's obviously a massive achievement unto yeah. itself, but when you're in that kind of competitive zone, can you get satisfaction from a bronze medal? <laughs> bronze isn't actually that bad, it's silver, yeah. that's the worst. Is it really, right? You were that close. But it's interesting, right, with swimming, because so much of it is about personal bests and world records. Yeah, absolutely. Can you ever feel like, I did it, I got to where I needed to be, or is there always um, a step more to take? That's, that's been the biggest issue for me, I think, and for a long time when you are an athlete, you're always aiming to be the best and you're always aiming for personal best times. And so when you feel like you've fallen short of those goals, it can be quite demoralizing and disappointing and um, devastating in, in some situations. Uh, but now as a 31 year old and having 
you know, being out of the, you know, in retirement for over three years, almost four years now, um, I can reflect and, and still be really proud of those achievements because I know the situation that led up to those performances, I know the outcomes, I know that I couldn't have done anything more on the day. Um, and I'm, I am actually really proud of all of my medals, all of my achievements and um, yeah, I think all of my performances as a whole, I, I really couldn't have asked for more. Like if you had spoken to me at you know 15 years of age, really when I first properly started my swimming career, um, that I would have been able to achieve what I did I would have absolutely laughed in your face. I would have never believed you that I could have achieved what I did. Well, what was it like then in your mid-20s to have to come to the realization or, or kind of make the decision that I'm gonna retire from this thing that I love, you yeah. know, and again, in your 20s? Yeah, it was, it was really bizarre. Um, when I, so I retired twice. Right. So uh, <laughs> the first time I didn't do retirement too well. So I was 24, I was, I was basically burnt out from the sport. I really sort of needed to, to move on and see who I was outside of swimming. Um, and I found that really difficult. It was incredibly confronting. Um, you sort of feel like there's a loss of identity and you don't know how to value yourself outside of winning gold medals and you know doing personal best times. That, that was a really challenging phase for me. So I spent 10 months out of the water and desperately needed that routine and that familiarity and um, yeah, being back in my comfort zone, exactly, essentially. Um, and I was really proud that I was able to come back into swimming and make a third Olympic team and do all those sorts of things. Um, but second time around, it, it has still been challenging. It still um, can be difficult making that transition into another career. It's been, a, it's been a good transition this time around, but still challenging and still confronting on certain levels as well. Well, you're an ambassador for mental health in mm. Queensland now. And obviously you've gone through these high intensity periods, not just with retirement, but also in you know, all you've achieved at the Olympics. Yeah. Did you feel like you had the systems in place there to deal with anxiety and stress and all those kinds of uh, difficulties? Definitely better the second time around. First time around, absolutely not. I, I sort of withdrew into my shell and didn't, um, yeah, didn't seek help. And I definitely fell into a depressed period in my life, probably for a good nine or 10 months until I, made the decision to come back into swimming. Um, like I said, that was part of um, what I needed to do to sort of heal and um, yeah, just be back in my comfort zone and understand what I needed to do uh, to achieve certain goals. Second time around, I knew what to look for. I knew what to expect. I recognized the triggers that can be quite stressful for me to lead me into um, any mental health issues that I might experience. Um, so for me, I need to exercise regularly. I, I talk to a psychologist regularly. I um, meditate um, daily. Um, and so th those things sort of seem to keep me in check with my mental health, which is really important. You now work in marketing, you've retrained and you're, and you're succeeding in yeah. this different field now. <laughs> How does it feel to be at that stage? It feels great. I mean, like I said, I think it was incredibly confronting at first because I started my first corporate job at 27. So um, <laughs> it was challenging, you know, I had to ask weird questions like, when can I go to the toilet? And <laughs> is lunchtime at about midday, sure. is that cool? <laughs> um, but no, it's been such an awesome opportunity. And, you know, I, the fact that I've, I have this opportunity to learn and to grow and develop a, a completely new career, which is so separate from my swimming. Um, it's been really awesome. And you work close to a pool. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I work close to this pool, which is beautiful. So I get to go for swims on my lunchtime breaks. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a perfect work-life balance for me. Hey, everyone. If you enjoyed that video, subscribe to our channel on YouTube or find more of our stuff at studentedge.com.au.